Hello there, channel members, friends, and followers from around the world. This is Q8 Pilot, your host for tonight's show. Welcome aboard, everybody. I'm very excited today to fly the MD-11 by RotateSim. And as a reminder, please be sure to check out my partners, i9 Builds. Uh, their website is https uh, be sure to give them a visit a wonderful store with lots of very good add-ons both for microsoft flight simulator and x-plane 11. i want to welcome casper welcome aboard mc crewfish joseph hello my friend welcome aboard the plane has received several updates this is version 1.3 i believe and uh, we have robert miller who just became a subscriber of the q8 pilot channel welcome aboard my friend Alex from the Netherlands, Sammy Tech Cookie, welcome aboard, my friend. Thanks for being a member here at the channel. Eboss, welcome aboard. Good evening. Big Smoke, hello, my friend. Sander, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. And thank you very much for your continued support. Big Smoke uh, still needs, yes, definitely still needs some updates, but I am very happy with the state of this aircraft as we speak today. I believe that it's actually very, very good and uh, hopefully it will be uh, improved uh, once X-Plane 12 is also released. Care, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. And we have also Ashtush Joshi. Hello, my friend. Nix Aviation, good afternoon, my friend. Welcome aboard. So, folks, today what we're going to be doing, we're going to be flying today the MD-11 in the FedEx delivery on a fictitious flight, but a real world route from Portland International in the state of Oregon to Sacramento, which is the capital of the state of California. And of course, our fly today is well embellished with the beautiful True Earth Orbex mesh and photoreal textures all along our route to Sacramento. Should be about an hour and 20 minutes or so of flight time. And we are going to be using Volanta app for flight planning. That's right, I haven't planned anything yet, so we are going to do this uh, together today in our uh, in our live stream. Uh, Peter, hello, my friend. Stan, hello, my friend. Greetings to you, my friend. Glad to have you with us. And thank you for your continued support, both as a channel VVIP member and as a moderator of the channel. Really appreciate it, my friend. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, folks, is we're going to bring uh, Volanta app and I really like the new update. Uh, with the new update, they have a, a bunch of features. One of which, one of the things that I really like is the fact that Volanta app has automatically detected our aircraft, which is an MD-11. The aircraft registration number, uh, November 585 Foxtrot Echo, and it has also detected our departure airport, which is Portland International. Now, how cool is that? That's really, really cool. I really like what they've done here. And they have actually, I, I really like the simplicity of Volanta app. Uh, of course, uh, I'm a premium member, so it means I'm a paying member. And of course, this gives you access to additional features such as the aircraft schedules and screenshots and things like that. And then you're able to save uh, the state of your flight uh, which is something I have a lot of appreciation for. Uh, again, as means of supporting the app and supporting the developers behind it, I went ahead and purchased the premium subscription. And once you do that, you will get, uh, you know, you will see this little icon here. And uh, of course, you are able to follow the flight on Volanta app through the web browser, or you can download the desktop app. Now, the nice thing is you can simply go here and enter the destination, which is in our case, Kilo Sierra Mike Foxtrot, which is Sacramento International Airport. And the lovely thing is you get the METAR just underneath. So if you hover here, you get the METAR for Portland International, and you get also the, uh, uh, the METAR information for your destination uh, airport which is very, very cool. I really like this. It is just from a usability perspective, it makes things very, very easy. It reduces the workload for us uh, flight swimmers in order to focus on flying. The alternate today is San Francisco. So Kilo, Sierra, Foxtrot, Oscar, 
that San Francisco International Airport. And now we are ready to add the flight. So we have the aircraft type, registration, departure, destination, and the alternate. And now we're going to say add flight plan. Now it gives you an option to say import a file, enter a text route, SimBrief or SimBrief using SimBrief.com. What we're going to do, we're going to select this option, SimBrief. And just by clicking on this, it will pop up the window here and automatically fetch all the information and bring it back to um, Volanta app. And now we can see we have the route. By the way, we can just enter our uh, flight number here, which is uh, FedEx uh, 252505. 2505. And that's it. Oops. There we go. Uh, I don't have the aircraft image uh, for, for this aircraft, but everything is now set up. And now we have everything here ready to go. And now you can see there is a flight briefing tab that appears here, uh, or you can actually click here. And now you have all the information related to your flight from the operation flight time, uh, operation flight plan, the times, the weights, flight log, the winds, the uh, ICO code uh, flight plan format, the weather information, and the NOTAMs. Very, very nice. I like what they've done here. I've shown this, by the way, before, but uh, the flight tra tracking capability uh, has been really improved in this, uh, in this uh, update. And uh, we are going to be using a Volanta app uh, throughout the flight. I'm going to bring it during different phases of the flight. But now let's go ahead and program our flight plan. And by the way, uh, one of the nice paid features is the schedule. So if you go to the schedules, you can select any airport and it will simply show you the, uh, you have your flights, your activities, a bunch of things really that you can uh, do with this uh, really very versatile, feature-rich application. Uh, Volanta app is, uh, it's been under development for quite some time. And I think, and by the way, now from the map settings, you can actually select, uh, so there's, uh, look at how many flights are there. Uh, for Volanta, uh, really growing community of uh, uh, of sim pilots using uh, Volanta app. Very, very versatile application. I'm going to remove uh, IVAO so that we have uh, less aircraft uh, showing on the map. Uh, the weather information, uh, lots of lots of different features uh, to show major airports, minor airports, and this feature is something I really like. The scenery map. So you can select Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane, and it will display all the sceneries that you have uh, installed for Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane, uh, which is very, very cool. You can toggle the weather on and off, US sectionals, satellite mode, uh, screenshots. So you, if you, you know, you can, uh, if someone has taken a screenshot, uh, let's see here, maybe we can find uh, some screenshots there along the way. Uh, maybe we'll do one. Actually, we'll take a screenshot while we're flying and uh, we'll show it here uh, along the path. You are more than welcome to uh, go to uh, Volanta app, volanta.app uh, in your web browser and track the flight there if that's what you wish to do. But now we are going to go to the flight planning. And as you can see here, we have uh, all the information that we need. Uh, I'm going to move this just uh, momentarily to the other monitor while we uh, do the program. But you know what? Let's uh, let's bring up uh, MD11 uh, aircraft menu, and we can bring up uh, Volanta app here. I think there is an option to uh, to make it stay on top. Uh, let's see. Show. Uh, all right. Let's see. Let's select this option here, and uh, perhaps we can now have it. Uh, on top of all other windows. Uh, let's see. Yep, that, that works. No, it doesn't. Okay, never mind. So we're going to go to first to the load manager, and uh, I'm just going to move it to the. Uh, I'm going to move it to the other screen. Uh, let's see here. All right, doesn't want to show. Where is it? Volanta. There we go. All right, I'll just move it to the other monitor and grab the information, and then I'll bring it back to show you guys what uh, other things we can do with it. So first thing first is the payload information. Um, actually, let's do, since I have this information in front of me, we're gonna go ahead and put the trip fuel. The trip fuel today is going to be uh, 16,700 
and 67. And Kara has just become a member of the Q8 Pilot Channel. Welcome aboard, my friend. Thank you very much for your support. Captain Poland, welcome aboard. Kenny Myers, hello, my friend. Boeing Corp, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. We have we, we have you with from Logan, New Jersey. Welcome aboard. Fred and Ann Foster, hello there, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us from Bangkok. Welcome aboard, my friend. All right. So uh, first thing first is we're going to put in the payload information. We're going to begin with the block fuel. And the block fuel today for our flight is 34,718. So 34,800 for the uh, block fuel. 34,800. And then for a taxi, we're going to put 1,000 pounds. And we don't need any of this information here. Trip fuel today is uh, 16,765, so 16,800. 16,800. And we enter that. And then the payload information, we're going to go straight to uh, the payload section. And we're going to enter the... Um, the payload, which is today 52.2. That's 52,000. I think we're just going to put 50,000 today. All right, 50,000. And now we're going to adjust the uh, payload center of gravity to obtain about 30, 30%, 30.1. That's perfectly okay. And everything now looks good. And we're going to say apply to the aircraft and load it into the FMS. Perfect. Now we're going to go to the ground operation and request the ground power unit. And now we're going to close this and take a look at this beautiful aircraft by um, by Rotate Sim. And I truly think that this is a, a really very well rendered aircraft, very well, well developed in terms of the 3D model. Uh, texture work is uh, is, again, very, very good. A little rough in some places, but overall, uh, if, I, if we zoom in here and look at the curvature of the wing, a very authentic, uh, I would say, uh, a replica of the MD-11 for, micro, for uh, X-Plane 11. I'm not sure why. <clears throat> when it first came out, we saw a lot of streams, and then things kind of quieted down. And I think uh, there, the, the aircraft had some issues when it was first leased, but I can... Uh, confidently say that all the issues uh, encountered uh, have been have been addressed at least the major ones and uh, the aircraft is is a really a real, a real joy to fly and quite a challenge as well uh, being a very large aircraft very difficult to steer on the ground by the way but uh, hopefully today I can give you guys a good show and show you how exactly to fly this aircraft to the best of my Ability Steve, 1927, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. All right, so uh, beautiful 3D modeling. Let's hop into the cockpit. And as you can see, again, the uh, texturing inside the 3D cockpit is done very, very well. This looks very much like the uh, MD-11. And by the way, there is a lot of depth in the system simulation uh, of this aircraft. So very, very well-developed aircraft by Rotate uh, Sim. All right. So first thing first, we're going to head over to the overhead panel. And from the overhead panel, we are going to turn on the battery. Now take a note of the really nice sounds. And the emergency uh, power is set to arm. And now we have external power. External power is now on. And we have supplied electrical power to the aircraft. Before we start the APU, we are going to perform the engine APU fire test. Engine one, fire. All right, so as you can see, the uh, engine fire test works perfectly okay. And we can now start the APU. To start the APU, we're simply gonna click here on APU power. And now you can see all the, uh, you can see the gens are being armed and the APU here is starting. In the meantime, we can come down here and test the lights and the overspeed test as well. Uh, this all checks okay. We are going to turn on the fasten seat belt sign, non-smoking signs. We're going to test the emergency lights and they check okay. 
Perfect. And we're going to arm the uh, emergency lights as well. Let's bring up some lights to the cockpit here. Uh, as uh, cloudy, uh, there's an overcast here at Portland International. So uh, 103 is what you should... Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, the 103 is the version that I uh, have today. Uh, and now we're going to go to the... Now, to test the cargo, you can definitely do a, uh, a manual test by clicking this button here. But normally on the MD-11, as it is in real life, uh, as soon as you turn the Adir's nav, uh, uh, the button to nav mode, it will perform the cargo fire test. So here we're going to turn this to nav, and now you'll see it will trigger the cargo fire alarm. Perfect. So uh, cargo fire test checks OK. And now we can set the Adir's to nav mode. We can also test here the uh, cockpit voice recorder, make sure it's OK. We're going to erase it, make sure we erase everything. Uh, that is uh, been recorded in an earlier flight uh, and now everything here checks okay if we look at our packs they are in the off position bleed uh, engine air bleeds for all three engines is off and the fuel pumps are all turned off and everything is manual by the way uh, we have the uh, fuel tanks indicating and we can do the quantity test here just to make sure that everything is okay and everything checks okay all it's good there perfect now we are going to head over to the uh, to the um, FMC, and from the FMC we're going to go to the flight plan in it. From the flight plan in it, we're going to enter our destination from and to, which is the departure and destination airports, Kilo, Papa, Delta X-ray, to Kilo Sierra, Mike Foxtrot. Uh, that's Portland to Sacramento. And uh, the alternate is San Francisco, which is Kilo, Sierra, Foxtrot, Oscar. And we're going to enter that here. And the flight number today, we are FedEx 2505. So uh, let's see here. FedEx, FedEx 2505. And we enter that here. Cruise. Now the SIM... Simbri flight plan gives us a uh, cruise level of 41,000 feet, but that's a little too much. Uh, so we're going to go with 36,000 feet uh, and enter that here. And the cost index today for our flight is, uh, let me check it here real quick. Um, so the cost index for the flight today is 20. So we enter 20. And right there, and we are good. Now we can uh, wait, initialize the IRS and wait for the IRS alignment to complete. While the IRS is complete and we can perform the, um, the hydraulic test, and to do this, we're gonna switch the screen here, the display to hydraulics, and then we're gonna go to the overhead panel and go to the hydraulic pressure test, click that here, and while we're at it, we're going to perform the uh, cargo door test here as well. Cargo door test is okay. All checks good. And we can now remove this. Actually, it will complete the test on its own. And <coughs> Mr. Don just gifted five Q8 pilot memberships. You are very kind, my, my friend. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. That's very, very kind of you. Thank you very much. Um, clear to land. Welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you. Black Blood. Welcome aboard. Jason Smith. Have it. Hello, my friends. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much, Mr. Don, for your kindness. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. All right. So we are done with the uh, we are done with the cargo test, and uh, we are now. If we look here, you'll see that the hydraulic test is now being performed. And we can now continue working on our flight plan. All right, we'll go to the next page. From the next page, we're going to confirm the block fuel. Uh, total gross weight is now set. And the uh, takeoff center of gravity is checked. That's not allowed there. All right, and zero fuel CG. So we click all of these to confirm. And we have everything set here. We're going to go to the next page. And everything is good here as well. Right. Now we're going to go to the flight plan and we're going to select our departure airport. And this is now very, um, you know, kind of Airbus-like. 
Uh, so we're going to select the Sid. Uh, the Sid today is the Herman's Herman's Five departure, uh, according to our flight plan. And uh, we're going to yep, Herman's Five. And we're going to be departing runway two eight left. Uh, and insert. Perfect. And then we're going to go to the last uh, transition out of our star. And we're going to select it to enter the airways. And now we're going to select the next airway, which is Juliet 189er. Juliet 189er is the airway. And we're going to, uh, that's going to, uh, we're going to exit at Lima Mike Tango. That looks like a VOR station. Uh, Lima Mike Tango. And then it is our um, star into uh, Sacramento. Yeah, cool. All right, so insert that. And now we can go, you can see the T, top of climb, top of descent. And now we can go to Sacramento and select the star. And the star is going to be the Tudor 2 and through the Lima Mike Tango transition. And we are performing an ILS, uh, let's see, which runway? 17 right. ILS 17 right is the runway through the two-door transition. And we're going to insert that. And now we have the entire flight plan in the FMC. There are no discontinuities, it looks like. We have a clean flight plan. Perfect. All right, so flight plan is done. And now we're going to go to the takeoff and enter the takeoff data. Now, for the takeoff, we're going to flex 56 today. And we are going to select flaps 15 for departure. That gives us a stab trim of 4.6. The slope and headwind, uh, if we go to the weather information, uh, if we go to the wind information at uh, the departure airport, uh, let's take a look. Uh, we have about um, overcast. We have nine knots headwind. So we're going to just enter zero for the slope. And we're going to select H9. The current outside temperature is 16 Celsius. Quite nice and cool here at Portland. And uh, we're going to select 16. And uh, we are going to confirm our V1s, 125, 131, and 145. And now you'll see that the speeds are set here uh, on the display, right there, 125, V1, V rotate, and V2. All right, the altimeter is uh, 29907, so we're going to set that up right now, 29907. And it will automatically set it on the first officer side because I've selected uh, this uh, option in the uh, in the uh, in the electronic flight back. We're going to set our altitude to 36,000 feet. Uh, and by the way, the uh, MD-11 has very powerful engines, so it will climb to its uh, cruise altitude quite quickly. Uh, Call me sticks, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. And. Uh, Mr. Don, that was really, really nice of you. Really, I really appreciate it. You're very kind, sir. All right, let's bring up some lights to the cockpit here. And uh, now we have uh, lights everywhere. That's very, very cool. And everything is now ready for um, engine start. By the way, starting the aircraft isn't isn't really a, a big deal. Um, I, I, think, I think the MD-11 is quite easy. Once you learn the flows, it's quite easy. Uh, the defog will be turned on now, and uh, we are pretty much now ready. Ah, let's turn on the APU, right? And now you'll be able to hear the sounds. Now we can hear the packs working. Yeah, pack two is now on, and now packs one and three, and all the bleed uh, engine bleed airs are now all turned on. We can turn off the external power, and what we will do We'll cancel the master caution. And now we'll go to the electronic flight bag once more. Aircraft menu. And we can dismiss the ground power unit and dismiss the chocks as well. And close this window. 
All right, we are now pretty much ready to go. Let's go ahead and uncage our display here. And we are going to set, uh, let's see. We're gonna set this to our flight plan and this one to performance. All right, so uh, everything looks good. And we're gonna make sure that uh, the auto brake is set to take off. And let's see, flaps set to 15. All right, flaps are set to 15. Raul, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Jerome Robinson, where are you from? Jerome, I'm from Kuwait. WRC Aviation, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. Uh, Ernesto Bone, good evening from Hungary. Oh, welcome aboard, my friend. Fabio, Fabio, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. We have uh, lots of people from the Netherlands today. Welcome aboard, guys. Glad to have you with us. A beautiful country, the Netherlands. Uh, uh, been there uh, a couple of times. Just a wonderful country. Very, very friendly. Uh, very friendly people uh, in the Netherlands. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so we are good to go, folks. We are going to head over to the overhead panel and we're going to turn on the beacon lights on. We are now ready to start the aircraft from its cold and dark state. And after we start, we already started the aircraft. We're ready to fire up the three powerful engines aboard this MD-11 and take it for a flight from Portland International to <coughs> um, to Sacramento. All right, let's call the pushback truck and let's get out of here. Ground to cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. All right. We are going to set this here. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. Perfect. Alrighty, can you choose which runway you land okay, in X-Plane uh, and ATC? Unfortunately, no, you can't do that. Uh, Alright, so we can now release the parking brake. Let's take a look here. Ah, he's, uh, he's coming in to connect the aircraft now. And by the way, this is runway 28 left. By the way, this, um, the FedEx, uh, the FedEx cargo area is not here. It's somewhere else. It's, I think, somewhere over there. Uh, this is the southwest cargo area, but it's closer in proximity to runway 28 left, so that's why we positioned the aircraft there today. Um, so, yeah. Uh, ASXP and enhanced skyscapes, my friend. Uh, no, I'm using today uh, de x -plane default weather. And... Okay, uh, and bypass and survey. We, parking brake. All right, and we are using uh, XP Realistic, uh, XP, sorry, X Vision version 2 with the um, impressive uh, preset. All right, so let's go ahead and release the parking brake. Parking brake released. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. All right, and we have clearance to start the engines. Starting the engines is quite simple. We're going to go to ignition A. Oh, sorry. Um... All right, so we have ignition A turned on and uh, beacon lights are on, so we're ready to go. We're, the start sequence of the MD-11 is engine three, one, two. So we're gonna start with the engine number three. Fuel is on, we're gonna wait for 12% of N2, and then we're gonna uh, introduce fuel. Not sure why the uh, chocks are still there. All right, that's good enough. Let's go ahead and start the engine. I really like the sounds aboard this aircraft. Uh, I think they're well made. The 
There we go. The engine is now spooling. Just look at those wings. Beautiful looking aircraft, the uh, MD-11 uh, by Rotate Sim. K3D Dixing, love XP-11, looking forward to XP-12. There will be a rush of videos on YouTube upon beta release, absolutely. Operation complete, set parking brake. All right, let's set the parking brake. Now, for some reason, uh, steering the aircraft on the ground was very difficult. So. Stand by. Uh, I think we have a good start on engine number three. Let's go ahead and start engine number one. All right, now we can... Uh, let's wait for uh, the engines... Uh, by the way, we can set this now uh, to, uh, to set the trim. We're going to go to config. And now you see the display has changed. We see the stab is at three. We want... Uh, let's just connect this. We want 4.4, uh, 4. so let's go ahead and set that here. 4.4 4 is now set, and flaps is uh, flaps and slats are 15. Uh, so now we can start the engine number two, and now you can see fuel uh, is uh, pumping in very nice displays. Oh, it's disconnected. I'm bypass then has been removed. Hand signal on the right. Well, see you next time, and have a safe flight. All right, thank you for your service. And uh, we're just going to wait now for the engine number two uh, to, uh, sorry, engine number one to stabilize. And then we're going to start the engine number two, which is the one fixed on the aircraft tail as uh, engine number two. So engine one and three are the ones fixed on the wing. And uh, number two is the one fixed on the tail. All right, uh, we can go ahead and set our flaps. Nice. And we have a good start on the engine number one. Let's go ahead and start engine number two. Very interesting today that I was watching the uh, on a documentary on the downfall uh, it's called the downfall. It's the case against Boeing, and I didn't know that uh, Boeing had to pay uh, as as a matter of uh, avoiding criminal uh, litigation. They had to pay a settlement of 2.5 billion dollars uh, to the FAA uh, as a fine for their uh, concealment of information related to the 737 MAX it was a very interesting documentary. If you have Netflix, I highly recommend you watch it. Uh, it's very cool and it's very touching as well. Uh, so there we go. We're going to start to the engine number two now. All right. So now if we bring... Um... All right. Uh, let's see. Let me remove the briefing. I just want to show you one thing. All right. So let me bring... Uh, why is it doing that? Um, all right. It's just one second here. Let me go to... General... sure why I'm unable to bring Volanta app all right there we go perfect all right so now from the map you can see this is our active flight and if you zoom in look at the amount of details that we have of the airport so this is as you can see Perland International Airport and this is uh, us right here 
Now, this is probably not correct. Uh, it's probably showing the path to the runway, and the runway is right here. This is runway uh, 28 left where we're going to be departing. But you, you can see we have all the taxiways, so we are uh, basically taking Bravo 8 uh, to the runway, to the whole short point, runway 28 left. So all the information you need is available to you. Uh, and by the way, if we go to a screenshot, uh, let, let me let me try to take a screenshot uh, just to kind of test this. We're just going to go ahead and say Shift and Spacebar, and now we have a screenshot of this uh, of this aircraft. Uh, and let's see if I can bring uh, Volanta at. Now it's saying there is one screenshot there, so we add it. You see this here? So now I can select this and add the screenshot. And now folks who are uh, on, you know, on the Volanta app now will be able to actually see this. Um, Niels, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Maria, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Aspi, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you all with us. Uh, so now, as you can see, there is a uh, there is a screenshot of uh, this FedEx flight. And if you are on Volanta, you'll be able now to go and see it. See if I hover here on the, uh, let me just uh, zoom out. So now you can actually hover here and says uh, Q8 pilot. In a few seconds, you know, he's posted this screenshot. And this is quite cool. I really like that. And by the way, this the same feature is coming to Sim Toolkit Pro. But I love the way they've done it here, how you see it and you can add it. And then everyone else can see it as well. Uh, I really like this. I really the the whoever is done, who's ever working on Volante is definitely someone who's got one a lot of taste uh, in developing user interface uh, interfaces and someone who really understand UX and UI. So user interface and user experience. Uh, so I really have a lot of appreciation for what they've done with this app. Brilliant, brilliant app, uh, Volante app. Uh, very nice and visually very pleasing to the eye as well. Uh, it, we'll take a look maybe after we land at some of the other features. I've done uh, a stream previously of Volanta, but uh, since the uh, new update 1.3, I believe, uh, I think they've added a lot of different features uh, into it, and I really do like a lot what I see in, uh, in this version. All right, so let's take this away now, and uh, let's see. We are now good to go. Uh, we have the uh, all engines running. So everything is good here. Uh, we can come to the overhead panel and we can uh, turn off the APU. And once you turn off the APU here, it will automatically turn off the APU power and stop the APU. You can still see APU power is available, but now you can see uh, everything else is here. Why is this showing? Uh, why is it showing low? It shouldn't show that. All right. So we're going to turn on the runway turn off lights are on. And uh, let's see here. Any messages in the FMC? It says auxiliary lower pump low. That's a first. I haven't seen that before. Why is it showing that? You know how things just go really bad when you're doing a stream? Like, I've never had this issue. And now we're getting this, and I'm not exactly sure why we are getting this. Hmm. That's really strange. We have everything set. Uh, hello, Captain, everyone. Welcome aboard, my friend. I'm not sure why we're getting low here. I'll turn it pump. Hmm. Very, very strange. All right, we have this set, uh, system manual, auxiliary lower pump low. 
Yeah, well, we don't need anything in the auxiliary pumps, uh, so... Any messages in the FMC? No messages in the FMC. All right, let's see if uh, we're gonna arm the speed brakes. Flaps are set. And let's release the parking brake. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, take off. Not sure why, select system manual. This is the system here, if you go to manual. Ah, uh, all right. All right, I think that fixed it. Well, I'm not really sure why we were getting this message, but uh, looks like everything is good now. Now, steering the aircraft has been a real challenge, and I'm not sure why. But almost full, uh, full rudder to turn the aircraft uh, on the ground. But just look at how beautiful this aircraft is. See this? It's just really a struggle for me to uh, to steer it, to take it to the runway. I'm not sure why. Maybe if we give it a little more power, we can steer it better. I don't know. But it just doesn't want to move. Won't budge. Approaching two, eight, yeah. Eight left. All right, well, that's On so much for taxiing, but we are now, um, we are now at the runway, and I'm not sure why, why we're getting this message. We're going to set this to uh, select system manual. I really am not sure why, but all right. So what we need to do for takeoff, uh, folks, is uh, not something you want to hear from a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Differential braking. Uh, yeah, I did that. Uh, it helped a little bit, but not much. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to hit auto flight twice. And now we are going to release the brakes. Uh, we're going to set this actually to climb thrust. And release the brakes. And off we go. Airspeed alive. V1, rotate. Positive rate of climb, gear is going up. have some clouds here so we're gonna maintain the the visual on our instruments until we are above the clouds this master caution is coming let's see what is it complaining about it's just the fuel system again all right we're gonna go to profile nav FM speed and we're going to track the flaps. And now we are climbing, folks. And see the slats are being retracted. Flaps are retracted.
All right, we continue to, I'm not sure, oh, FM is speed. Not sure why uh, it has disengaged FM is speed, but everything looks good now. And I really am not sure what happened with the, uh, with the fuel there. All right, so we are now climbing through Everything seems off in this uh, in this flight. Look at that. The speed in the FMS is 250. So why is it not doing it? I have no clue. Now let's go to profile again. Wow. All sorts of issues in this flight. Now let's reduce the speed here. All right, now it's. It looks like it's abiding by the. It's going to go down now to probably 250. No. We're not following the flight plan, by the way. All right, auto flight. Now it looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do. But I don't think we're flying. Uh, let's uh, increase. Yeah. So let me do a heading select. Now the aircraft is doing its, uh, its turning. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go direct to... You know, I'm not really sure why it has done all of this today. Uh, direct... There we go. All right. Just really not sure why I turned to manual heading. Yeah, that's exactly what we've done. We've turned to manual heading and now we're back on the flight plan. And now the speed is increasing. Let's take a look here at the outside real quick. Woo! Wow! Autopilot is off, press autopilot again. Yeah, it looks like it went off, uh, can grow, uh, yeah, it was a uh, turn on, yep. No, it's, uh, it's just, uh, it's fine, it's fine. Everything is uh, under control now, and uh, we are, we can set this to off, the auto brake is off, and we are going to disarm the speed brakes as well. And uh, flaps are up, and everything is looking good, above 10,000 feet, so let's go ahead and kill the landing lights and runway turn-off lights as well. We're going to release the passengers, actually there, there are no passengers, there's just cargo, but uh, the first officer and uh, the captain flying, which is myself today, can uh, now remove the, fasten, uh, remove the seat belts, and uh, we are good. By the way, we need this light to be on. Let me show you guys the strobe lights. Just look at how beautiful those strobe lights are. Beautiful.
Shodan Cat. Hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. HD Simulation, welcome aboard, my friend. All right, so now we're climbing to 36,000 feet. And uh, aerial old is looking good. It looks like the issue with the uh, fuel is now subsided. And now it's all right. Strange, but true. All right. That way we can have our TCAS. All right, let's decrease a little bit. And now we're heading uh, over to our flight path here, as you can see. Climb. All is good. Here is a wing view for you guys. Beautiful wings aboard this uh, MD-11. And now, if we go to... All right, let me show you some very cool... Uh, let me, all right, let me bring it here. And what I do want to show you is... Uh, look at this, guys. Just look at how uh, Volante Ab draws the flight path. How cool is that? Of course, this indicates a climb. And as we reach our cruise altitude, the color changes. And this is uh, basically what we've done. Uh, so we've over... Uh, we overflew the SID out of uh, Portland, uh, but then we we're back on track. But I really love this. I really like what they've done here. And now you can see the aircraft setting. Now you can clearly see the screenshot that we've done there. Uh, it looks like there is a friend request. KK Simulations, welcome. And add it. <laughs> and now what we can do is uh, we can do more screenshots. Uh, so you can do multiple things now. Uh, with the, with the Volante app, so very very uh, uh, here we can increase the range, and we are approaching. We are now at 36,000 feet, which is our cruise altitude, and everything is looking fine and dandy. All is looking good. Yeah, the issue with the fuel is subsided now, and uh, everything's looking good. We are looking good, and we should be at our destination shortly. It's a short route to uh, Sacramento International. You must have pulled some bits through the fuel line. Um, I don't know. I really don't know what's, uh, you know, what's gone there wrong there. Um, but I've done a test flight earlier and everything was fine. So I don't know what went wrong. We can see the status now here uh, of all uh, the aircraft systems. Everything is good. Engine, hydraulics, electrical, air, fuel, uh, miscellaneous, maintenance, all's good. There are no warning messages or anything like that, so uh, everything is uh, good to go. And uh, we are uh, flying uh, at 36,000 feet. And by the way, uh, we need to set this to standard, 299 or 2. Uh, the 18,000 feet is the transition altitude in the United States, uh, so... So, yeah, it was a bit of a, <laughs> uh, it made me sweat a little bit, but that's okay. And uh, now we are on our way to Sacramento. And yeah, I, I, I really, I think when the aircraft first came out, it had some issues with LNAV and uh, I, I know Flight Deck to Sim uh, has delayed his, uh, his streams. Uh, due to the fact that it had some issues. Uh, I was given a, a preview copy of this aircraft. So, uh, it's not you. Uh, the MD-11 is glitchy. It is a little bit glitchy. Uh, but I think uh, India Virtual Aviation, welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. Uh, but I think it's uh, it's come a long way. Uh, it's really come a long way. And it's... Uh, it's, it's very flyable. It's very enjoyable. Uh, it's very high fidelity, if you ask me. Uh, but yeah, it's got it's got issues. I'm sure they will be R&D out. Uh, fuel and crew put sugar in your fuel tanks. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, guys, you'll be pleased to know that I have set up my webcam. And uh, hopefully, uh, with the 60K subscriber mark, I will be doing a Q&A. And during the Q&A, of course, we're going to bring up the camera. Uh, 
we're gonna bring up the camera and uh, I know a lot of you guys have been asking for this by the way if you still want to see just a picture of me or something like that you know if you're you know if you want to like I know a lot of people have sent me messages saying can we see your face I'm not sure what the infatuation is with the face but <laughs> you can always head over to my uh, Instagram account, Q8Captain74, and there you'll be able to see my face. Um, but yeah, we, we are going to have a webcam in my 60K special. And by the way, folks, on the 4th of July, uh, I have uh, a gift for you guys. I'm giving away two copies of a Flight Control Replay, and we are going to be doing a flight in Ireland. And I'm still not sure if uh, we should do it on a GA aircraft. Uh, but more than likely, I will do it aboard the BAE-146. Uh, I'll pick a destination, uh, you know, a short destination uh, to fly uh, in, uh, in Ireland uh, or somewhere in Europe. But I am kind of, I have two nice airports I want to show you guys uh, in Ireland. So, yeah. Yeah, 300 subs to go. And uh, it's just unbelievable. Um, where the channel, uh, you know, the growth of the channel has just been outstanding and I, I'm just, I'm lost for words. I really don't know what to say, but thank you guys for your, for your support uh, over the years. Uh, 60k to me is, is pretty significant for a hobbyist uh, such as myself. Um, uh, and, and I'm very, very pleased to where the channel has gone. And by the way, folks, uh, just to let you know, um, I am going to be sponsoring Flight Sim Expo, and I will be there next June in Texas, USA. And I'll be one of the sponsors. And so if you can make it, uh, please do. And if you're not, maybe I am going to sponsor one of you guys to attend Flight Sim Expo. More information will come that uh, on that during uh, the uh, the 60k sub uh, special that I'm planning, and uh, also probably when once more information is provided to me by Flight Sim Expo, uh, then I'll be able to share with you guys uh, a little more. Uh, Enzo asks, "What is the maximum long haul flight we can proceed with in the MD11?" Oh, gee, I don't know. Um, Movie star photo. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. You might not like what you see. Lol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll see uh, the old man with uh, with the gray hair. So, all right. So, if we look at uh, our uh, flight plan here, uh, or if we look at the second FMC unit, you'll see that the top of descent is in 243. Uh, nautical miles. I'm going to increase this a little bit here. So this is the top of descent mark. Uh, this is Lima Mike Tango and now we're going to fly direct to uh, Lima Mike Tango. Um, and what, 240 nautical miles so not a very short, not, not, it's not short, not long, about one hour and 30 minutes in total. Uh, so about an hour before we reach our uh, destination. And uh, we continue to cruise at 36,000 feet. It, unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, clouds. And this is actually a very nice uh, area with very beautiful terrain. Uh, here you can see far in the distance they are a very indigenous of uh, Portland and Seattle area. Uh, some really beautiful mountains. But uh, I think the, the clouds are kind of cluttering the the view of the beautiful mountains. Uh, this is actually Orbex scenery, so it actually is very, very good. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's uh, just a lot of clouds there. Uh, hopefully, it will subside along the way, along the route, and we'll be able to see, uh, you know, a little more. There, that's a better view there at the mountains, uh, the mountain range here in, uh, I believe we, we've already passed Oregon and uh, flying uh, in the, probably the northern part of Seattle uh, as we uh, continue south to California and over to Sacramento. I will see you in Texas a couple of hours drive from Dallas. That's perfect, Steve. And uh, yeah, I definitely plan on uh, being there. What time is... Uh, what time it represents? 
I saw your video since 2000. Oh, really? India Virtual Aviation. Oh, wow. You've been a, a subscriber since 2016. Wow. That's a really long time. Thank you very much for your support, India Virtual Aviation. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it, Steve, and I really am looking forward to uh, to meeting, you know, all the fine people in the community, uh, getting to know people a little more. Uh, to me, it's it's really something to one um, advance the flight sim community, uh, and flight sim expo has done a lot for the community. Uh, just bringing all of us together in one place is uh, is something uh, I personally find uh, you know very rewarding uh, so yeah why not help them out and uh, um, and have fun uh, have some fun along the way yeah uh, so yeah I'm, I'm really planning on uh, doing a sponsorship there and being there and hopefully I'll meet whoever is uh, you know, is able to attend the uh, attend the event. Yeah, I think last year or the the year before Corona, uh, the last Fly Sim Expo was was a huge success, and uh, there was presence from all the big guys. Um, of course, Laminar. I, I'm not sure if Microsoft or Sobo were there, but I know Laminar were there and Frostmaster and all the big guys, uh, really in the uh, in the community were there. So, yeah, very, very exciting times for the flying sim community in general. All right, so, guys, we are looking good and uh, continue our flight now, uh, cruising at 36,000 feet. Uh, beautiful Orbex scenery all along our route today to Sacramento, California. And uh, I'm very pleased that, uh, you know, Fresno, California uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator has been released. Uh, I've taken a look at the airport. The airport is so-so. Mm, it's uh, it's not really the fidelity that I was expecting, especially that I have the Orbex version of uh, Fresno Yosemite for X-Plane. Uh, I was really hoping to see something really wow in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Unfortunately, it was not the case. The airport is okay. I think it's good value for the money for what it you know what is offered, but I think it needs work. Um, uh, a few things misrepresented, a few things really need work. The terminal itself, the main terminal, uh, it needs work. The building itself, the texture of the building needs work. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's, it's pretty good rendition of uh, Fresno Yosemite. Yeah, so here is a, uh, again, here is a look at the external view. And I'm glad that the clouds have subsided because now you can actually see the beautiful Orbex scenery uh, here, and you can see all the mountain range. Uh, very, very nice. Look, guys, this is X-Plane 11, and I think it still looks fantastic, especially with Orbex scenery. I think it looks really, really good. Yeah, quite honestly, this looks fantastic. Sun cloud still on this side, uh, but here I think it looks pretty good. Yeah. So all's looking good. 200 nautical miles for top of descent. We are looking good. And uh, we should be arriving into Sacramento uh, just in a little while. And while we're at it, let us uh, let me bring Volante app. And now you can see uh, this is the aircraft. So this is us, the departure from Portland. And we have come here now. And let's actually do one thing. Uh, Nix Aviation, yeah, welcome. Welcome to my list of friends on Volanta. So what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to go to the external view, like that. And let's go ahead and take another screenshot. So shift and space. And now we have another screenshot. So if I go to Volanta app again, now it says add screenshot. So I'm going to click there. That's our screenshot and add it. And now it will upload the uh, 
it will upload the photo and it will show it exactly in the same timeline where we've taken the screenshot so it will so now the aircraft is there there you go and now you can see this is exactly where the screenshot has been taken uh, so uh, if we look if we scroll out so we are still in, uh, in the state of Oregon as you can see here yeah this is Washington Seattle so uh, I I was actually it's it's actually Seattle then Oregon then California so we're not going to be passing in Seattle uh, that was my bad so we are still in about uh, the middle of Oregon uh, and now you can see those are the two screenshots that we've taken and this was taken 30 minutes ago by QA pilot and this is a few seconds ago and of course you can now click that and whoever is on Volante app now will be able to actually see the screenshot at exactly the location where we've taken it and this in my view is very very cool it's it's a really cool app uh, it's going to be here in Texas this year yes Nick absolutely and I'm definitely going to be there June 23rd to 25th that uh, should be an awesome time absolutely stamp it's going to be a blast uh, by the way you can also uh, let me come in here. Uh, you can go here all right so you can enter your notes here you can take a look at the stats so right now for this active flight we are at 36,039 feet we're on heading of 176 degrees ground speed is 408 knots remaining time about 47 minutes estimated arrival is at 1950 1952 zulu remaining nautical miles 320 that's a little bit off uh, because we have, uh, well, maybe, well, actually, maybe it is, uh, it is correct, but, uh, well, what is, what is this All right. um, so yeah, so, so really, really cool app. Uh, I really like it. And by the way, you can go to all your, uh, why does it keep going? All right. So if I go to a, a aircraft, so you have all your fleet of aircraft, you can search for them here. You can go to the activities, do approaches, challenges. Uh, you can visit countries, uh, events, schedules. Uh, of course, this is the schedules there where you can select on an airport. Uh, well, maybe we'll do this one once we land and it will give you the entire routes available for that specific airport, all the in and out. Uh, and it will draw that for you on, on the map as well. Uh, so that's very, very cool. And by the way, you can also integrate with Discord, Navigraph. Uh, you can import uh, all your flights from Project Fly or SimToolkit Pro. Uh, you can also, once you have a schedule, you can add it to your rooster uh, here and you can go to it later. So I have a Jazeera flight 601 uh, from uh, uh, Kuwait International to Azerbaijan, uh, as you can see here. Uh, Baku, I think Baku City is, is the one here. Uniform, bravo, bravo, bravo. Um, feature rich, really. Uh, so many things in this application. The user interface, very user friendly, very easy to use. A few things, you know, a few more features, and this will be uh, just brilliant. You know, uh, you can go here, by the way, and you can also select your briefing format, briefing units. Uh, auto save, screenshots, change log, uh, simulators, support for all your simulators, DCS World, Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane, uh, all of them uh, are uh, supported. So all in all, very, very good app. <coughs> and, um, and by the way, full support for your online, uh, for, for Batsim and IBO, you can go to Prefill here, Batsim, IBO, Pilot Edge, Boscon, all of them. So you can just simply go there to file your plan and you're good to go. Yeah, really, really cool app. All right, we are looking good. And uh, by looking here, we are about 164 nautical miles from, uh, from the top of descent. And we are looking good, ladies and gentlemen. Chas, man, some reason I can't buy anything on the marketplace. All it says is purchase pending. 
and that's it. Did they break something? That is exactly the same problem that I'm having uh, with the marketplace. I think to do, I think it's got to do with the fact if you're running Microsoft Flight Simulator as an administrator, uh, you will probably more than likely encounter that issue. And I have been encountering the same issue. I can't buy anything from the store. And I've sent a support request to a Sobo uh, or Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I've got, you know, the standard reply do this, do this, do this, make sure you do this, which is all very basic stuff that has already been done. Uh, anyway, I've tried all the, uh, you know, all the recommendations that they've, uh, they've given. Uh, unfortunately, nothing has worked. Uh, I don't think there is a, a fix for it. So I just hope that whatever is on the marketplace is available somewhere else to buy it. Uh, otherwise, we're stuck. For, for example, I wasn't able to get the Airfoil Labs uh, Bristol um, uh, which was re re recently released uh, by Airflow Labs on the marketplace exclusively, and so yeah, uh, unfortunately we couldn't couldn't uh, couldn't use it. Uh, too too bad, too bad. All right. Um, let's see. Um, currently, the Rotate MD-11 uh, does not offer the passenger variant. Uh, so you only have the cargo variant of the aircraft. So it is the MD-11F. Uh, it, it is not the passenger aircraft. Hopefully, they'll come up with the aircraft uh, at a later stage. Um, this Rotate trijet is a terror to land. <laughs> Hopefully it will treat us well. It did not treat us very well on takeoff today. And we've had some issues with the fuel and what have you. And uh, steering the aircraft on the ground has been really a nightmare. So hopefully on landing it'll be better. And uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully all will be good. And if we look here, we are 146 nautical miles. By the way, if we go to the, uh, it works somewhat like a Boeing and somewhat like an Airbus, but if we go to the nav radio, once we are closer to our destination, it will automatically populate the ILS and the course, approach course for uh, Sacramento. And if it doesn't, then obviously we need to fix it. So if we look here, this is the top of descent and uh, we are gonna keep everything on profile today. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, 336, and then 12,000, 142. It's just an abrupt. Maybe we'll change the speeds. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll worry about it when we get there. But that's our top of descent in approximately 139 nautical miles. And here is a wing view for you guys. Toya, hello my friend, welcome aboard, glad to have you with us. Guys, what is your opinion about the XB11 store? If you are referring, Sammy, to the Org store, uh, the Org store has been around for a very long time, and in my view, it is the, the place to go uh, for buying anything X-Plane related. Uh, the site itself is secure, uh, it works well, um, it's quite fast, uh, the downloads are quite fast as well, so when you're downloading gigs of data, um, you know, it's quite fast. 
uh, you get good support as well from uh, Nicholas. Uh, so yeah, overall I think it's a, it's a pretty good store. I wonder if you can help me when I put my Embraer 175 from x -Crab into heading hold. It takes a dive. Um, I'll be more than happy to uh, take a look at uh, this in detail. If you can post it on the community help channel in my Discord, uh, I will take a look at it. Glenn, hello there, my friend. Welcome aboard. I have been on vacation in the Far East, flown Qatar A380. Great plane, nice and quiet and comfortable. Absolutely, Glenn. Uh, the A380 is, is just a beautiful plane. It's just an incredible uh, aircraft, and it's very sad to, uh, you know, to to learn that Airbus has uh, basically brought the production to a halt. Yeah, I think the the last uh, the last production will be in 2025, if I'm not mistaken, and then after that, that's it. Uh, Airbus A380 is gone. TFK Linux Gaming, welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. All right, so if we look here at uh, our flight plan, uh, 119 nautical miles, uh, that's the top of descent. We are looking good. And if we look at uh, Volanta here, uh, we can see that, uh, yeah, so this is Sacramento. And we are almost, almost at California. So you can see here, this is the state line, state border uh, from Oregon. And now we're entering into, this is a uh, Lima Mike Tango is actually at the border uh, between Oregon and California. And uh, the weather at uh, Sacramento is 23 degrees Celsius, 180 degrees, 14 knot wind, Woo. Uh, VFR conditions. So there are no clouds, should be a bit of a uh, challenging landing at 14 knots, but uh, there are no clouds, so it should be all right. There's a lot of people using uh, using Volanta app. And welcome aboard, David93. By the way, you can follow the flight. So if I click here, it will automatically follow the flight. You can pause the simulator from here. And we can click here and you can edit the route, cancel flight, upload an aircraft image. You can change the settings and do all sorts of things. You can also minimize this. You can still see the aircraft registration number and you can see the flight path here. So if I zoom in here a little bit, that's us right there, your active flight. And you can always expand, collapse or expand this uh, for you know better visibility of uh, where you're heading. Um, really brilliant app, works really well with all the uh, with all the simulators, including DCS, by the way, I've tested this on DCS and it works really well. So, uh, so yeah. So what we're going to do at uh, top of descent is we're going to reset the MCP altitude to uh, 1,000, I believe, 800. Uh, if we look here, yep, uh, 1,800 is the uh, platform altitude or the initial approach altitude uh, for uh, Sacramento. And, uh, and we'll let the aircraft use managed speed. And once we are established on the localizer and the glide slope is one uh, notch above the center line we will uh, lower the landing gear we will disconnect the auto throttle by the way to disconnect the auto throttle you either click on the left auto throttle disconnect button here or on the other side you've got it both sides 
And uh, we're more than likely going to do flaps uh, 35 uh, today for a landing. Uh, just look at the texture work again here. I think this looks really, really good. I like the texture work on this aircraft. I think it's done very well. And uh, yeah. Now we are 94. Is it 94 or 54? 93 nautical miles from top of descent. And uh, yeah, we're looking good. I'm actually thinking maybe we need to... So that's 21 nautical miles. And uh, let's see here. If I go to the next page, ah, we don't have the wind information. Okay. Well, that's all right. We are now at the borders of the state of California. And uh, for those of you who just joined us, we are heading to the capital of the state of California, Sacramento. I've been to Sacramento myself a few times. I liked Fresno a little better. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, nice, nice place. California is a, is a nice state to uh, to visit. And uh, if you're there, you know, the, the top places that you need to be at is probably San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego. Those are probably the uh, highlights of the state. But there are a lot of very nice places, such as, uh, uh, you know, Cayucas, California. Uh, Pismo Beach is, is beautiful. Uh, Monterey. Um, those are really nice places to visit in, in California if you were uh, ever there. There is also a very nice small little city called Oakhurst, uh, California. It's actually very, very close to Fresno. Not sure if it's part of the Fresno County or not, uh, but Oakhurst, California is, uh, is very nice. It's very close to the Yosemite uh, National Park, so it's got really mountainous t terrains, uh, and then you can visit you know, Shaver Lake uh, over in that area. Uh, very nice place uh, to visit. Uh, wonderful, really. Uh, all right, let's increase there. I hope we'll have sufficient... Uh, I'm thinking maybe we should... Uh, you know, maybe we should begin the descent. Let's take a look here, 77 nautical miles. And we have Mur Murat. Murat, okay. Welcome to the VVIP membership, my friend. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you, sir. Really appreciate it. Welcome aboard. I am actually thinking of taking one of you guys, one of the channel members, with me to Flight uh, Sim Expo. Yeah, I'll sponsor one of you guys to go with me. <laughs> with Korean Air, A380 is back. Andrea, you forgot AP. I don't follow. All right, here's the turn. We're approaching top of descent mark now about 69 nautical miles all right so if we go here and we go to approach and landing you will see that we have the uh, all the approach uh, information for our speeds so clean minimum is at 180 slat exit minimum is 149 flat 28 minimum is 139 and 35 for land VF is 142 and VRF is 137. Uh, go around information is, uh, is available here as well. So we can enter the waypoint information and we can go to the nav radio. Now you can see that the ILS frequency, which is 111.10, as well as the approach course 167 degrees has already been uh, detected by the aircraft navigational radio and inserted 
uh, automatically for us. This is the top percent mark now. And so we're going to go back to the flight plan. And as you can see now, we are approximately 63 nautical miles from top of descent. Let's go ahead and reset the MCP altitude to 1800 feet. All right, 1800 feet is set. And we are looking good. Your takeoff was terrible because the autopilot... Yeah, 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 that's right. That is correct, yes. It was the autopilot. It wasn't the autopilot, it was me. <laughs> Hello, California. Alright, so we're almost there now, folks. Uh, not much to go now. If I go to increase, yeah, I think we're almost there now. Beautiful Orbex scenery. Let's see here, 47. Well, I guess it's a good test also to see how well the LNAV VNAV calculations are in this version of the MD-11. But as you've seen uh, in the very beginning of this uh, stream, it's actually... Uh, is that Mount Whitney off to the west? I believe so, yes. Right there. Let's take a look at the outside, right there. I believe it is, uh, Stan, yeah. Does it start, um... Casey, welcome aboard, my friend. And to answer your question, the answer is yes. It will automatically start descending at the top of descent. It is definitely a nice rendition, Stan, yes. Orbex uh, really has done very well for themselves in terms of uh, developing scenery and also bringing a lot of, you know, the partners uh, into uh, into their store, uh, similar to what others are doing, such as, uh, you know, uh, INI Built and uh, Airsoft and, uh, you know, all these uh, developers who also brought in other partners uh, to sort of kind of maximize uh, or generate, uh, you know, uh, additional revenue streams. And uh, I think Orbex is, is a very respectful, uh, very respectable company in the flight simulation industry. Uh, they've been around for a very long time and they've developed some excellent add-ons for uh, all flight simulators, uh, with the exception, of course, of uh, DCS. Um, but I really like their products a lot and when it's Orbex, when it's actually by Orbex, of course they have different developers, uh, but when it's Orbex, you know it's really, really good. Their in-house development team is, is great. And uh, and the True Earth series uh, from Orbex is outstanding. 
for old simulators, by the way. Whether you get Orbex for P3D, X-Plane, Microsoft Flight Simulator is just outstanding. Outstanding products. Uh, Mark's landings and aviation vids, what about the sounds? What do you think? Um, well, the sounds are are actually pretty good on this aircraft, if you ask me. Uh, they're not bad. Cha, 20 months VVIP member at the Q8 Pilot Channel. Thank you very much for your continued support and loyalty, my friend. I really appreciate it. Greetings, Yoran. Welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you with us. And, uh, yeah, I think the sounds of this aircraft, especially the switches and the gauges and clicking that is, is actually done very well. The engine sounds not bad. I mean, they're, they're good. There, that's the engine sounds. I think they're, they're, you know, they're pretty good. Not bad at all, in my view. Uh, can they use uh, a little bit of work? I think maybe the engine sounds can use a little bit of work. Uh, but overall, I think this is uh, just excellent. Yeah. It's outstanding aircraft, uh, if you ask me. Rough around the edges, without a doubt. Uh, can it use improvements? Absolutely. Uh, but as it stands today, uh, if if you really look in depth at the simulation of systems aboard this aircraft, it's just outstanding. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, uh, John, thank you very much for your loyalty, uh, being a VVIP member. 20 months, almost two years now. Wow. That's a long time, and I do appreciate it very much. Right, we're coming up to top of descent, about 90 nautical miles now, and uh, we should be arriving into uh, Sacramento shortly. You can, this is very, very familiar terrain, at least for me, uh, having lived in California a very, very long time. Looks really, really good. Here's a look at the outside again. There we are, top of descent in 12 nautical miles, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost at uh, our destination now. Yes, Ja, it is uh, Orbex. Why does the uh, why does the MSFS seem somewhat cartoonish? I guess uh, to me. Sammy, I, you know, I, I don't know, but I will tell you this. Sometimes when I'm flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I get exactly the same feeling. Now, and I've noticed that when there are clouds and when there is moisture in the air in Microsoft Flight Simulator, that's when it looks its best. So when there are clouds and there are shadows being casted on the ground and there's a little bit of moisture in the air, it looks just fantastic. But when the skies are totally clear and you're flying at a high altitude, then it does look very cartoonish in uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Whereas in, in X-Plane with Orbex, I don't think it has that same cartoonish look. Uh, but that's just me. Helicoptero Virtual. Welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you. This is funny, but x feels much more realistic to me. In some respects, yeah, I mean, when, when you have... Uh, by the way, it looks like we are at the top of descent now. So, one nautical mile. And the aircraft should begin the descent, as you can see now. 
And let's see, 1800 is set. Why hasn't it begun the descent? Hmm. All right, well, we will begin the descent then. Yeah, I'm not sure why, just some things didn't work as expected today, um, including the takeoff, the fuel, and I, by the way, I've done a test flight before this one, not the same route, but, um, you know, I've done a test flight and everything was perfect. Just sometimes just when you're doing it on stream, things start looking, you know, starts acting up for some reason. <laughs> One of the strange things when you're streaming. Yeah. But that's alright. We're gonna do minus 1900 vertical speed. Uh, and now maybe we can reduce it a little bit to 1600. Now we're just gonna monitor this needle here. Make sure it stays in the middle. If it goes down, it means we're too high. If it goes up, it means we are too low. Um, so right now it's okay. And we continue our descent. We're gonna also reduce our speed a little bit, uh, momentarily. But we will let the FMS uh, manage the speed for now. Clear that. I agree with them. Yeah, absolutely. Murphy's Law 2.0. Yeah, if something can go wrong, it will probably will. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know why it just, you know, you do things perfect, you know, when you're just doing it on your own. And the minute you begin streaming something, all sorts of issues just... You know, you encounter all sorts of issues, including, you know, uh, crash to desktop and, you know, <laughs> I don't know, it's, I really don't know what to say, but that's a fact, that's a fact. When, when you are streaming, all things just kind of go crazy. Nonetheless, we are looking good now, and uh, we continue our descent towards uh, Sacramento. We have quite a way to uh, to descend to uh, 1,800 feet, but we're looking good. We can probably decrease the rates of descent a little bit to 1,500 feet per minute. I'll do at this point is uh, let's take a look here uh, that's okay I think the speed is still okay so we'll just leave it for now altitude is good we're down to 29 uh, down to 30,000 for 1800 And right now, if you look at our flight plan, we need to be in at 29. Yeah, we're doing actually perfectly okay in terms of our altitude.
The MD-11 is hard to control. Is this your first time flying it? Uh, no, it's not my first time flying it. I've flown the aircraft a few times. This is probably my third time or fourth time flying it. Uh, I've done it, by the way, for P3D a lot. I used to fly the MD-11, uh, the PMDG MD-11, uh, which I thought was really a great aircraft. I'm not sure what this triangle is here in front of us. But yeah, it is It is not an easy aircraft to fly. It's quite a challenge to fly the MD-11. Uh, but hopefully I've shown you everything to there is to see in terms of setting up the aircraft from its cold and dark state, uh, despite the glitches we've had as we took off from Portland uh, International. Uh, I think pretty much is uh, everything has worked uh, in accordance to what our expectation is. And by the way, I'm just wondering if I go to profile now, what would happen? Uh, it looks like the rate of descent, it's reducing the rate of descent. Uh, it wants to bring this diamond to the middle. And once the diamond starts moving down, it should increase the rate of descent to maintain the same. Yeah, as you can see now. It's right there at the middle, and this is where it wants to keep it. Now it's increasing the rate of descent to maintain this diamond on the middle here. See this here? So it's pushing down now, 27.4. And now everything is controlled by the aircraft autopilot system. Here's a look at the outside. Wow, what a beautiful scene here. As you can see here, it wants to keep this needle right there. So it's going to increase the rate of descent to keep this diamond in the middle. And now we're almost at 1800 feet. Hi Q8, I'm a newbie. Sorry, is this online flight? Uh, so we're not flying on online ATC. If that's the question. The amazing pilot looks nice. I'm debating whether to get uh, the MD-11. Well, um, it, it's not a cheap, uh, it's not a cheap aircraft to have. Uh, so just make sure that you are completely happy. Uh, there are a few more videos uh, done earlier by the community. Uh, I think uh, B1 has done one, so just go ahead and, and, you know, take the perspective of others and what they thought of the aircraft before making a decision. Personally, for me, um, this is a very high fidelity representation of the MD-11, probably the best rendition of an MD-11 for a flight sim, and uh, I, I do recommend it without a doubt. Now you can see this is going down, so it's increasing the rate of descent, and uh, we will reduce our speed momentarily. Uh, but we are now getting pretty close to our destination. All right, so if we look at... Uh, if we look at the... weather information at... Uh, let me get the altimeter for uh, Sacramento. So Sacramento is, uh, let's see here. Two niner niner zero. Two niner niner zero. All right, I think we need some drag. Let's 
set uh, at 18,000. We're going to set to the. Now you can see this coming back up. All right. All right. So two nine or nine or zero. We're going to set this to nine or nine or zero. And we continue our descent now. The transition altitude in the United States is uh, 18,000 feet. I absolutely adore Orbex, True Earth, California. Beautiful. I think we're going to begin uh, reducing our speed momentarily. Um, we're definitely too fast, uh, but that's what we have in the FMC. It has changed, by the way, according to uh, the previous flight plan. This was very different, but uh, I'm not sure why things uh, have just didn't go as planned in this uh, in this uh, flight, but. I think, by the way, uh, when I do recorded videos and I look at the, uh, you know, I look at the stats, most of the folks just go either to the takeoff and landing. They don't really watch the entire flight. Right, 13,000. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, folks, I'm going to extend the speed brakes a little bit, and I'm going to change our speed to 250 knots. supposed to do. Right, we're coming up to 10,000. Landing lights. And we turn off lights. And smoking and seatbelt signs. Why is it not... going down. Alright, cool. Alright. Alt error at Fappen, 1800. Oh, 
that's okay. Alright, perfect. We're looking good. You always need to pull again to activate. Yeah, looks like. So we're okay now, we're flying on the aircraft profile. So everything is good. Let's go ahead and make sure that we don't forget setting the auto brake. There we go, auto brake is set to medium. Guys, just look at the beautiful scenery around us here. Just really fantastic scenery. Look at that. All right, we're almost there now, folks. A7000 for 1800. And uh, we can see the speed, we're almost there. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna say approach land. And speed check. There we go. And the airport should be right ahead of us now. Still says no localizer. But we're looking all right. We go to, yeah, that's right there. Let's make sure the, uh, let's make sure that we have the nav radio. Yeah, that's uh, already configured here. And 10 nautical miles. Yep, we're looking good. Just look at these slats here. Beautiful texturing on the engine. The wing looks fantastic. Very, very nice wing indeed. A new update 104 patch are coming. That's great to know. Amazing pilot, welcome aboard. Casper, hello my friend, welcome aboard. Are the MD-11 bugs fixed? Yeah, most of them are. If we look here, uh, two door. There's no error. You can see the localizer needle, although it's still saying. Uh, no, it says no GS. It has... that's the localizer right there. So we're almost there now. And uh, Sacramento is right ahead of us now. Right, we are going to arm the speed brake. We're looking good. There we go, we've captured the localizer. And we are looking good now. 
Demon Demon Trader says recently purchased the Q4 XP and loving it absolutely, absolutely. It's a wonderful aircraft. You armed the spoilers. Yep. Yeah, we did. We armed the spoilers. We are. We're good. Two hundred knots. Walter at Fappen. That's our runway ahead of us now. We might be a little too high. Can we see the runway? I can see the runway ahead of us now. Uh, but we can't see the glide slopes still. Here we go. Let's reduce our speed. Maybe that'll help us a little bit. If we look here, uh, Fappen. And then that's the runway right there, so... Yeah, we might be a little too high. But, uh, I think we're good. I think we're good. Be able to bring it down nicely. obviously a little too high but we're looking good uh, for my specs uh, oh you're asking master caution CDU message why does it keep saying alt error alt error that's a first All right, now we can see the glide slope needle, and obviously we're a little too high. Landing gear. Landing gear. All right, we're going to go ahead and lower the landing gear. So we'll complain about the landing gear until all three gears are down. All right, let's check our flaps. Flaps 30... Flaps 50, actually. So, no, I don't... I want flaps 35. We still have uh, some time to clear the altitude, so I'm just going to let the aircraft do its thing. One forty-three is our approach speed. should be just fine.
All right. At this point, I'm going to disconnect the autopilot. And we are going to descent ourselves. We're going to disconnect the auto throttle. My aircraft. And welcome to Sacramento, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Wow. We've made it safely, huh? Minus 121. Not bad. Not bad. Considering the uh, circumstances there. Yeah, we'll take a look at the replay in just a second, and uh, it's good to be here in Sacramento, California, a place where I've been several times in real life, so it's always good to be here. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going, but uh, that looks like the cargo area. The aircraft doesn't want to steer. So I'm using the tow brake. We're just going to bring it here. Very, very difficult to steer the aircraft on the ground. All right. Finally, let's set the parking brake. Parking brake is set. And now we can turn off the aircraft engines. And let's go ahead and do a replay, ladies and gentlemen. I think maybe right here. Let's do that. That's what I wanted to... Sh okay, there we go. Just look at this aircraft. What a beautiful looking aircraft. The MD-11 by Rotate. That was pretty cool, huh? Yeah. All right, let's do it again. Uh, where's the aircraft? All right, here, let's go. All right.
was a bit of a steep descent, but I think it was pretty good. tell you guys this was really fun I thought it was, that was really fun so I hope you guys enjoyed the stream tonight as much as I enjoyed it and uh, I hope that you've learned something uh, useful uh, during this uh, stream uh, definitely Volanta app is, uh, is something I highly recommend. There we go. Uh, Volanta app. Uh, and now of course the flight is done. Uh, as you, as soon as you shut down your engines, if I go to the flights now, this is the last flight that we've done uh, on X plane 11. Uh, and if I go to the stats, uh, there, we have all the information that we, uh, so the block time was 100, uh, one hour, 34 minutes. That's the real t block time. The distance covered during our flight plan was 481 nautical miles. We've burned 21,500 pounds of fuel. Flight time, the actual flight time was one hour and 18 minutes. That's the date. Passengers, of course, we don't have passengers, but the landing rate was 153. The landing G-force was 1.19, which is a bit high. Uh, landing speed, 129 knots. Simulator is X-plane. Uh, just look at, again, every, all the data that you want is available here. Uh, I've got no notes. Uh, by the way, you can add tags. So I can say, for example, I don't know, uh, live, uh, create a new tag. We can say XP11, something like that. So now you can actually create tags. Uh, for your flights, which is a nice feature there. Uh, screenshots, again, those are the two screenshots uh, we've taken uh, during our flight. Uh, and we can go back here. And this is the second one that we've taken. Uh, again, very, very nice. You can share the flight, by the way. You can copy it. And now you can share it uh, wherever you like. Uh, if I go back here. So now, for example, if, if you wanted, I just really wanted to show you guys one more thing. Uh, which is the schedule. If you go to, oops, if you go to the schedules here and it says select any airport to begin. So let's zoom in here and select uh, Paris Orly Airport. And if you click it, you just see all the destinations from this airport. You can see this beautifully represented visually here where you can see all the real world flights that originate from Paris Orly Airport. And it shows you all the information. Now it shows here that the scenery is installed for this destination, which is really cool. Uh, and it shows the, uh, uh, the, uh, the time in Zulu, uh, the aircraft uh, distance, the hours, uh, all the related information to the specific flight. You can add a destination if you like here. Uh, you can either add an airline, aircraft, duration, or destination scenery. You can also <coughs> you can also come here 
and you can um, filter by duration, for example. So now I'm going from the shortest route, shortest duration to the longest. And uh, for example, we can select LFPO to LFPG, uh, update current flight. You can add it to your roster here. Uh, as you can see, I have one already added. So I can scroll down here. You can see all the explained scenery that I have uh, for all these airports. One hour, 10 minutes, for example, I can select this one. And when you expand it, it actually gives you, look at this. This is something I really like. It gives you the actual departure time. In real world, this flight is an Air France 6116, okay? And fly, it, it's one hour and 10 minutes. It flies from LFPO to LFBO, which looks like this is Toulouse. And the departure time is 8. Arrival time is 910 local time. It actually departs from Terminal 3 and Gate Charlie 1-4. Check this out. This level of detail is incredible. And if you really want to fly like real-world operations, you can actually do this with, uh, with Volanta app. This is something I really like a lot. And uh, if, you, if you've been following the channel long enough, you'll know that I really like details. And this is an amount of detail I have a lot of appreciation for. Uh, so we can add this uh, now, and now we have the flight here. So anytime we want to fly this route, we can come here. You can add as many as you like, and when you're ready, we can say fly now, and it already sets things up for you. All you need to do now is add your aircraft, and from the aircraft, of course, you can have uh, many. I think if I type in AFR... Um, Air France. So I already get like an A320 Air France and now it populates everything for me and automatically displays all the weather METAR information for this uh, for this flight. Uh, you can add a flight plan uh, as I've uh, shown you in the beginning of the video as we've done our flight today. Uh, you can say don't use a flight plan. You can end the flight. You can add an alternate. Um, so if you add a flight plan you can you know, enter the text route, import, do all that good stuff as I've uh, shown you in the beginning of the video. Uh, but also another thing you'll find in the Volanta app, of course, all the flights, these are all the flights that I've done, uh, basically. Uh, so quite a number of flights. Those are, by the way, imported from Sim Toolkit Pro. But you can see this is all the flights that I've done uh, since I started using Sim Toolkit Pro. And... Uh, uh, in fact, these are the flights that I've actually used SimToolkit Pro for. So I've done a lot more than this, but this is what I have in SimToolkit Pro. Um, then you have your entire fleet uh, of aircraft here. So I have a number of all the aircraft I've imported, uh, some with uh, pictures, so you can add the pictures. Obviously, it doesn't show any flight hours for this aircraft here, but this is pretty cool. Um, and you can, of course, add your own. Uh, here you can add the aircraft registration, ICO code. Uh, you can filter. Uh, you can purge your aircraft. You can filter by airline. And if I say, for example, KAC, uh, it will show me all the aircraft I have for Kuwait Airways. Uh, for example, this aircraft here, it will show me all the details for this aircraft. This is an A320neo, uh, Kuwait Airways, and the flights, it's flown from Kuwait to... Uh, Dubai uh, on the 4th of February 2022 at 6.44. Uh, here's the stats on this aircraft. Uh, just brilliant. The amount of details that you'll see here is just incredible. <coughs> really very good work by Volanta team uh, developing this uh, flight planning and tracker uh, really for all your favorite flight simulators. Works with all of them. So really, really a, a great tool uh, to have. Also, you have a number of activities uh, that you can uh, do. Uh, so there's uh, approaches. Uh, obviously, I haven't done any of them yet, but there is a hidden um, aero cache. The first A340 flight to Antarctica landed here in November 2021. Uh, so you can do all of these challenges here, or uh, maybe you want to do an approach. So, uh, sorry. You can go to the challenges here. And this is, uh, again, a number of challenges here. Amazing approaches. Uh, Courcheville, uh, that's uh, Queenstown. 
uh, and so on, Princess Juliana, uh, Lukla Airport, and so a number of challenges that you can do. Uh, obviously, I, I, I've done a few of them uh, now. And then you've got events, so you can take part of an event. This is, for example, a, the live event today. Uh, and you can actually, this is on VATSIM. So all the events uh, are there uh, also for you to join. And if you click on the event, you'll get the event details. Uh, this is the Caribbean Shuttle version 2. The date, going, not going, you can click that. So really, in terms of your flight planning needs, this application is um, a self-contained application that's got everything you need in order to manage your flights. And not just that, but to have a little bit of fun. So in, in my view, this is something I definitely would recommend, uh, Volanta app. And uh, guys, do show some support for the developers and, and sign up for their premium version. Uh, I mean, I, I always recommend if, if this was donation where I would donate to them uh, without a doubt. And uh, uh, look like airport Swiss 001 has entered the chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so definitely there is a lot for you to appreciate in this uh, in this application. And uh, by the way, just so that you, uh, again, if we look at the map, let me just remove this here. Uh, again, you can uh, hide or show the different networks. Uh, these are obviously the different airports. Uh, so Volanta, Vatsim, and now they have IVAO as well. And by the way, when we click on a flight, it gives you all the information related to that flight, the actual uh, filed flight plan. Uh, so this is the flight plan and you can go to the stats. Uh, you get everything related to the uh, aircraft, estimate remaining time, ATC route, uh, the uh, altitude uh, plot, uh, plotted against the uh, actual time in Zulu, uh, the speed, altitude, everything. It's just great, just really great. And again, you can either follow the flight and you can also share the flight. You can now use copied, so you can do all that fine stuff. Um, from the scenery map, we can select Microsoft Flight Simulator. And if I zoom out, uh, you see these stars. This is actually the scenery I have for Microsoft Flight Simulator in terms of airports. I think it tracks everything in the community folder, uh, but I'm not sure if it's uh, I'm not sure if if it's from the marketplace. I'm not sure if it's going to show it here or not because I do have a lot more uh, scenery than that but it looks like it only looks at the community folder. By the way, you see now there is uh, different sc screenshots of other users, uh, other Volanta users here. You see this here, for example. Uh, you can click here again and take a look at the screenshot. Uh, you, you can see this. I really like how the, the, the map is, is a very functional map. And by the way, the performance wise, it's very, very good. Uh, so I, I really like this. So this, for example, is Salzburg Airport that I have in Microsoft Flight Simulator and shows here. And uh, we can go to the scenery and select X-Plane as well. And now it's going to show X-Plane. And uh, so now it says, as you can see, this is East Midlands Airport and it says X-Plane 11. So now, and it will show you the path to the actual airport. This is a, a custom scenery, Orbex. This is obviously an Orbex airport. So very, very useful and there's the amount of detail is really to be commended um, everything you need in one place i love the way they've done their live map it's just really very thoughtful and like i said whoever has done this got real taste and understands ui ux very very well so my kudos to whoever's worked on this it's absolutely fantastic um, by the way one of the nice things also is the fact that you have the VATSIM ATC coverage automatically shown here. So you don't have to go to all the different websites for IVAO and IVAO is still not there. So you probably still need to use their WebI uh, website. But in terms of VATSIM, uh, you can see all the coverage here. Uh, you can see here and you can click and it will actually give you the uh, so, so this is center and it gives you the frequency time online how long it's been there 
uh, all the information, Jeddah Central covering the entire kingdom, Saudi Arabia. When local ATC offline for charts, uh, visit VATS, uh, whatever, we have feedback and so on and so forth. So all the information related to VATSIM and the ATC coverage in that specific area is included here for you. Um, other things you can do, you can say load nav data, and now we can select, uh, so now we have all the cycle 2205, and now we have all the fixes, nav IDs, upper airways, lower airways, and labels. And now you can see I have a lot of airports in this uh, in this area here. So if I click on the fixes now, then you'll get all of that information you see here as you zoom in. You see all of this now? Now, now of course, it looks cluttered. So if I remove this, let's remove the fixes, North Atlantic tracks. Uh, let me do, just add the nav IDs. And now that we add the nav IDs, we have, uh, let's see here, uh, there, there we go. So now we have here a, looks like a VOR station, There's an airport here. Again, the airports are quite detailed. So if you, uh, I'm not sure what's going on here, but yeah, um, something broke, it looks like. But it looks like, yeah, I lost the, the map there. Let's see if I can go back to it. Well, the map is gone. <laughs> Yeah, the map is gone, but I think you've seen uh, enough to um, really appreciate what is, uh, you know, what Volanta app can can do for you. And uh, that's really it for uh, tonight's uh, show, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you've enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed streaming it for you. And if you have any questions, as usual, please do post them in the comments section after the video is processed. Uh, do you use HD or SD True Earth? Uh, for California, I'm using HD. Uh, for the states of uh, Oregon and Washington State, um, uh, Washington State and California, I'm using HD. For the state of Oregon, I'm using the SD uh, version uh, just to save a little bit of uh, space on my uh, uh, on my hard drive. Uh, yeah, it's probably a bug. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to the uh, uh, there to the uh, to the map, but uh, that's pretty much it, uh, folks. I hope that you are you have enjoyed this. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please do post them in the comments section below. Stay tuned for the next stream where there will be a giveaway on the fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July for anyone in the U.S. of A. And I will see you guys all very soon. So until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for tuning in this evening. Stay safe, and bye-bye for now.